Welcome back to Photoshop. And today we're gonna take this image that's a little bit flat, give it some softness, some color, and some style. Now the first issue with this image is this yellow thing right here. It is very strong and it competes with this face. Your eye, because this is so big and bright, competes with this over here. So the first thing that we are gonna do is select this little yellow thing here. We're gonna remove that. Now I've got the structure and the color down low because we don't want that very high. We'll just replace it with that area right there and that looks pretty good. That's gonna be good. We're gonna blur this background so it doesn't need to be perfect at this point. Now the first thing that we have with this image is there has not been any retouching. There's nothing wrong with not having any retouching, but what we're gonna do, we're just gonna go in here and fix a couple little things. And really what I wanna do is sort of soften the skin, and then we're gonna give it a little sharpening and a little pop before we start blurring and doing everything else. And that way, this will look a whole lot better. So we're just gonna go in here and we're gonna clean this face up a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good. We're not doing anything drastic here. We just wanted to clean this face up just a bit. Now, normally when I would be doing any sort of retouching or softening of face, I would be doing high frequency separation. I'm gonna show you surface blur. I'm not a huge fan of surface blur, but for this type of image, I think it's gonna work and really all we're trying to do is just soften the skin a little bit. When you're shooting backlit, you have to open up the faces and you can start to see a little pixelization or kind of where it's falling apart in those shadows. So we're just gonna slightly soften those. Then we're gonna come in and sharpen the areas and give it a little pop because afterwards we're gonna be adding some screened layers over top of it and that's gonna soften it back down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna drag my layers palette down here and cover up the info palette because we're not really gonna be using that too much. Just gonna slide this up so we have a little bit more room. And this way you're gonna be able to see what we're doing. So I'm gonna hit Command J just to duplicate that back layer because we're gonna need to duplicate it. The next thing that we wanna do is actually do that surface blur. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna go to Filter and then we're gonna drop down to Blur and we're gonna go down to Surface Blur. Now if you've never used Surface Blur and you have a slow computer, this can take quite a bit of time. So we're gonna zoom in so you can kind of see what this is looking like. Now the way I do this is I'm actually gonna dial my threshold all the way out. And then I'm gonna go ahead, I just want a little blur. So we're gonna keep this at six and then I'm gonna slowly creep the threshold over. And as I do that, you can see it's starting to blur that face in just a little bit. And that's all we want. So we're gonna leave that at 11 and we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. That was an easy surface blur. So it went really, really fast. Right down here, we have a mask. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hit Alt Option and that's gonna add a black mask and take that away from everywhere. We just want this on the skin. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna get a big giant brush. We're gonna paint actually over the eyes and everything. And, and that's gonna be okay because we're gonna come back in and paint it, the areas back out and I'll explain why. I kind of painted over the eyes there. And we can zoom back in. So when you're doing things, it's easier just to paint everything out and then go ahead and hit X and flip it to black. And then I'm gonna take my brush and you're gonna to have to constantly move that brush. And then I'm gonna paint the areas that I actually want detail back in. And it's just quicker and easier to do this rather than trying to avoid it. So a lot of times you'll see me just kind of paint everything out and then come back in and paint the areas back that I don't wanna apply that to. All right, so now we've taken that out. Now that mask is just on the skin, it's not on the background, it's not anywhere, it's just here. And so we've done a simple surface blur on that face and that's exactly what we want. The next step here is we wanna sharpen, but once again, we only wanna sharpen a very specific area. So we wanna make what's called a stamped visible. So I'm gonna hit it, it's Command Option Shift E, Control Option Shift E on a PC. And what that does is just combine these two layers. And then we're gonna come up here and we're gonna zoom in so you can see this once again, what we're doing. 
And then we're gonna go up to filter and then we're gonna go to sharpen and we're just gonna use a simple smart sharpen. And I'll drag this down a little bit. So we're gonna take that smart sharpen and we're just gonna go ahead. Now I'm just looking here at the eyes and the details. We just wanna give that a little bit of pop here and that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And that's gonna apply this sharpen to this face. Now I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna click an inverted mask, which is holding Alt Option, clicking the mask, and that's gonna take that away. And what we're gonna do is selectively apply that sharpening. So I wanna sharpen the eye parts here, a little bit of this detail, eyebrows, and eyelashes a little bit. We'll come in here and get the lips. And that's all we wanna do. We just wanna sharpen those little areas just a little teeny bit to give it a little bit more pop. All right, so the next step that we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create another stamp visible. So it's Command Option Shift E, Control Option Shift E on a PC. And we're going to blur this. And so the blur that we're gonna use is in the blur gallery. So we're gonna go up to Filter, Blur Gallery, and we wanna select Tilt Shift. Now we're not doing a tilt shift blur, but, but what we wanna do is not blur this area and then continually fade and blur as we go back into the background there. So we're gonna take this and we're just gonna drag this down. Right here, this area is not getting blurred and then it's gonna get progressively blurred as we go back. So we can come in here and set this blur. And I think I'm probably just gonna do around what it's set at now, which is around 20. But you can go ahead and fiddle around with that and get this blur exactly where you want. Once again, we're gonna go ahead, hit OK. And this is going to blur that area in the background. Now you could have turned this layer into a smart object and that would allow you to go back anytime and change the amount of blur on that image. But I'm not gonna sit here and waste the time on that. Once again, we're gonna create a mask, but this time I'm not gonna create an inverted mask because I just wanna paint some areas out instead of in. And we are gonna go ahead and make our brush a little bit bigger here. And then we're gonna paint that blur out of our subject. So we've painted that out of our subject. I'm gonna hit X and I'm going to lower my flow like we've learned in lessons before. And then I'm gonna actually paint some back in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply some of that blur back into the subject. I really just want it out of her face. And that looks pretty good. We're not gonna get a lot of blur here because remember we didn't add any blur. It's really just starting about here and then blurring up. So we can see this is that blur that we've added in the background. And that looks pretty good. Next step that we're gonna do here is we are going to increase the color. Now we're not really gonna be increasing the color on her face too much, but more in the background. And this isn't gonna be a giant step in color. So we're gonna make a hue saturation adjustment. And then we're gonna come in here and we're just gonna increase that color a little bit. Now we can go in here and selectively do this as well because in this image, I actually just want to increase some reds, some yellows, and we can do this magenta right here in those little flowers. So we're gonna increase those quite a bit as well. I don't wanna increase the greens because the greens are not really necessary. We're just looking to increase the color in the reds, yellows, and magentas in this image. And we'll just go ahead and leave that on this whole image. I think that's gonna be perfectly fine for right now. If we decide later that we need to paint that out, we can come back and easily paint that back out. The next step that we have here is we have this background and, and this looks okay, but it's we've lost the color and it's kind of gotten blown out. So what we're gonna use is a gradient. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer and we're gonna come over here to the gradients and you can see I've already got this selected. This is just what a default color that comes with Photoshop. Is it this one or is it this one? Yeah, so it was this one. 
So this was just the default color and my gradients that I picked. And it's kind of this oranges to yellow. And we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And then we're gonna put that gradient in. Now you're gonna see this happen over here. So what I'm trying to do is get just in this area. So we have a little bit too much red in this case. So I can just hit Command Z. So I wanna start that yellow about here and take it all the way up to there. We just wanna get that little blend. Now, the longer that you make this line, the longer the gradient transition is gonna be. If I start down here and I draw this up here like this, we're gonna get that longer, smoother transition. Now, obviously we're not gonna leave this like this. So what you wanna do is come down here, go to your blending modes, and we are gonna drop down to soft light. And then that's going to colorize this whole image with that warmer, nicer color. Now my goal to doing this was I really wanted this more in the background than in the foreground. So we're gonna paint some of this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a mask. We're gonna make sure that we have black. We are going to grab our brush. I've increased my brush because it was a little bit too small. And we're just gonna go ahead, paint this out. I think I'll paint a little bit more back in here. Black areas, let's just kind of soften those a little bit. Then hit X again, and we're gonna make sure that we paint a lot of, almost all of that out of that face right there. Now that looks pretty good, so I'll turn this on and off. So you can see we've completely and utterly colorized this image at that point. The next thing that we're going to do is make more of a light coming from this direction. Now these are really easy to do. We're gonna come down here and we are going to create a new layer. You wanna do this on a new layer. Now we've already got a color selected and the way I'm selecting those colors is I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna go ahead and pick a color that I like in my image. Then I'm gonna increase by sliding this to make that color more vibrant. And then I can kind of go around here and fill around and kind of pick the color that I want which seems to be just about there. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Once again, if we don't like the color, we can always kind of go back and redo it again. To do this, you are gonna take your brush and you're gonna make it huge. So what I'm trying to do is I actually want the center of the brush around just a little bit forward here. We don't want it like this, cause then it's not gonna look. We want the hottest part to be right up in this corner. So I'm making this brush really large and really soft. So you can see this is a hard brush, this is a soft brush. We want that soft brush. This is gonna be up close to that corner and all I'm gonna do is click once. However, I'm a moron and I forgot to increase my flow. We're gonna come back up here, do it again, and there we go. So obviously that doesn't look good, it's too strong. We're gonna change that blending mode to screen and turn this on and off so you can kind of see what's going on. So that is our area that we're increasing that highlight. And then I'm gonna hit Command T, which is transform. And we're just gonna go ahead and drag that way out here. So what we're doing is just stretching that this way over top of our subject. I'm gonna hit return and apply that. And then you can see just like that, we've increased that color on her face. That's giving you that kind of like backlight washed out effect. So what we'll do here is select that first image and then go all the way down here to the bottom and select the last image. I'm going to hit Command G for group and I'm going to turn this off and this is our original. You can see how cool and muted the colors are and then I'm gonna hit this here and you can see this is our kind of warm, soft, washed out image. Now, if you do not like the effect that you're getting right here, you can always put a mask on this. And then once again, you can take that black color. You're gonna to wanna to lower this flow quite a bit. And you can paint some of that out in the face if you're losing your face too much. Now notice I'm painting on this side of the face because it would be coming this way. So this is where we would get less of it. And then we're just going ahead and removing a little bit of that so it only affects the face a little bit. I think I'm gonna make one last simple adjustment. I'm gonna come up here, make a simple curves adjustment, and I'm gonna increase the contrast of this image. So it's gonna give it a little bit more pop. And basically what I'm looking at is increasing the color and contrast in every place other than her face. So once again, we're gonna take that black mask. I'm gonna take this back up to 100%. I'm gonna paint that out of her face there. 
So you can see, I'm gonna turn this on and off. So we just got a little bit more rich colors and contrast in that image. And that is a simple way to increase color softness and stylize an image inside of Photoshop. I would love to say this is a great image to create an action to do what we just did, but the truth is it's not really worth your time because every image is different and you need different colors, you have to mask out different areas, and actions don't really work well in these circumstances. So hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below, and as always, don't forget to subscribe.